Hey there, what's going on? It's Jordan Johnson, your host of Hack of All Trades. And we have a very special episode today. First guest on the podcast ever. Um, we have my buddy uh, Tanner here with us today. Say hi, Tanner. You're muted, Tanner. <laughs> <laughs> whoops hey what's going on everybody uh just some technical difficulties starting off really nice on the hack of all trades podcast. Yeah, you know, i mean we're hacks so it's all right if we mess up every now and then or if my mic arm squeaks you know just another hack um so tanner here is a friend of mine want to bring him on just to maybe hopefully offer a little more entertainment than my talking head videos or podcasts but um he is also pursuing a career in voice acting and runs an ASMR um, video channel on YouTube. Um, I'll let him choose to plug that or not if he wants. Um, but yeah, we're uh, just going to be talking about um, all sorts of random stuff. I got a new headphone amplifier in here. So might as well show that bad boy off. I'm eating some lovely chicken noodle soup, which maybe we can get some some ASMR going on. <laughs> a little bit of ASMR. Yeah. On the uh, chicken noodle soup eating. Oh, these are my chicken noodle sounds. Yeah. Oh, Maybe we'll make another video for your channel after this of us eating chicken noodle soup. <laughs> the MSG that is just slowly adding to the flavor. Yeah. So, Mr. Havati, I'm, I'm curious, genuinely curious. What... What was the trigger? What was the, the like, oh yeah, I'm going to go for this voice acting thing? Well, I think I'd always done voices before growing up. And so people always asked me, especially family members, they're like, why don't you go do voices? You're just so good at, you know, being all silly. Reading voices. Just, just reading them voices. I mean, I would do like impressions and things like that. And they were very encouraging. Mm -hmm. And they were like, you know, you should go. Like, you're very funny. You should do, uh, you know, try to do this for a living. But it just... It never dawned on me to actually go do it because I was extremely anxious and yeah. super conscious growing up. I never would have put my face on anything because I thought, you know, I, I could not handle the slightest bit of negativity. Mm -hmm. um, and being an adult and like getting past a lot of that now um, with, you know, a lot of help. I'm now at this point where I'm just like, you know what? I mean, if I have this skill and if I have this gift that I'm ready to bring into the world that I might as well figure out like a, a way to do it and especially do it in a business oriented way. So I do, I do kind of like have a, like a side ASMR channel. I don't really like attach my actual like name or anything to it, but um, I essentially do that just to kind of get in some daily practice and consistent work um, actually recording and editing and uh, you know, a little bit of video stuff here and there when I upload to YouTube Um. And the reason for that is that when you're doing whispering or soft speaking or whatever, it's a lot, it's a lot different than doing like full on voice acting. Mm -hmm. You have like, you're working with your normal voice. And so uh, there's not much cutoff you have to do. Like it's a separate discipline in itself. But when you're doing whispering, your microphone has to be sensitive enough to pick up all of your syllables and all your noises mm -hmm. that comes with, you know, breathing noises and pick clicks and pops and, over modulation so learning uh audio engineering and things like that from an asmr perspective is uh, i would say it's it, it teaches you a lot very quickly because yeah. every time you know if i turn up my mic a little bit right here so you know you can obviously hear that you can hear the gristle in my voice now a little bit a little bit more than i was when i was oh, at 50 yeah. percent. oh yeah 75 right i just peaked i can see it on the actual uh mm -hmm. interface and so when you're working in like ASMR and you're whispering and your mic is super sensitive, you pick up on everything in your house. Cause this is just so new for me. I don't even have a soundproofed house or anything. Um, and, uh, basically there's a lot more editing involved with getting rid of pops and clicks and compressing and just adding filter after filter until you mm -hmm. get professional ASMR kind of like insomnia relieving stuff without, you know, somebody listening to your clip and immediately just like, going deaf from like a single mic pop mm. but yeah. Uh, yeah it's good practice it's a good hobby i mean should it take off well enough i hope i can like sell the recordings as like audiobooks because i do a lot of book readings yeah uh, but it's kind of just like a like a 
anonymous hobby project for the moment. So I don't really tell people about it or talk about it too much. Yeah. But well, it's a cool hobby. At least I know since at least Josh and I have known you, we've always been like, you got to do that. <laughs> Your voice yeah. is too perfect. <laughs> so I'm just a happy camper. You're doing it. Yeah, um, I am curious though. Was there like, uh, for me, it was always the Forrest Gump voice. I'm not saying I'm good at voices, but was there like a voice you did when you grew up that was like the first voice that you learned to kind of mimic and like get you into, I don't know, the different sort of dynamics or like voice acting and how crazy versatile people like that are. <laughs> there, there is. And uh, it's our friend from the Lord of the Rings uh, named Gollum. <laughs> oh, yeah. I would grow up doing that voice. And like I grew up, my parents were like uh, very, very religious growing up. And so whenever I'd like do that voice around like family oh, members, they'd be seed. like, that boy's got demons in him. You got to take yeah. make sure that he's okay. You know, he's not, you know, connected by Satan. And so they'd be like, <laughs> They they go up to my mom and be like, "Is there something wrong with him? Like, have you like checked him out?" I'm like, "No, that's just our son. That's just, that's just him. That's what he does." Yeah. <laughs> so they took it as just like a really weird thing because like in the South, it's either like you know you got to be like super straight cut, and it's just like, "Oh, that boy ain't right." Yeah. And that was like growing up. There's something wrong like, with that boy. Funny. Something wrong with that boy. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I would always do that. So I just like walk my my parents would be watching Lord of the Rings. I just walk in and be like, stupid. And they'd be like, could you not scare us, son, please? <laughs> <laughs> did you have a, um, and I, I'll branch into my, I guess, a little story too with this, but uh, did you have a career growing up that is anyway what related to what you want to do now? Or I guess my example is like, I was talking with Paul yesterday, another one of our friends. And, um, I was telling him about when I was a kid, I wanted to grow up and be a train conductor. Um, mainly because when I was a kid, I didn't understand what that job actually is. <laughs> I thought it was like Thomas the Tank Engine and like, you know, like ugh, the conductor waves out the window to all the happy people as he drives the train <laughs> by and he's like the cool guy. And then I grew up and realized conductors like sit for hours on end and pull long. Like, <laughs> heard cars with them that look you know just like shipping containers what most conductors yeah. delivering and then they're reading a book in the front and everybody hates them because they slow down traffic and i was just like oh maybe i was glorifying this as a kid it's like hours just sitting down like you know 13 hours on like the railway like making sure that like nothing goes wrong and then it's like 24 hours signing like paperwork to take all the csx carts off and you know. yeah and just like being in cities you don't know i like, can't i don't know it just seems like uh <laughs> when I was a kid it was a little bit uh, simpler to think about what that life would be like I remember I wanted to be an inventor growing up I still have the book somewhere I have Ooh. like one of those uh like chunky ass equilarious uh like graph pad books that are like mm -hmm. leather bound like a thousand pages and I just used to like take page by page and just like you know, sketch all these ideas like this is a salt and pepper shaker that has a middle where you can actually blend the mixture. Yeah. And uh, I, I could probably find that specific page if I knew what the book was. Um, mm -hmm. But I remember growing up, I was like, oh, man, I want to be an inventor and I want to make all this crazy stuff. And, my, you know, I remember like looking at it and I like <laughs> started to watch like YouTube inventor channels and they're all just like, hey, what's going on, guys? Inventor 226 here. Uh, Got another season to from the FCC for trying to make my own uh, Wi-Fi routing chips. So, you know, I'm in a lot of debt. My family's going through a lot of stress. And I was like, uh, I'm going to not do that anymore because yeah. that's terrifying. Yeah. I remember, I think growing up, there was some assignment at some point in school that was like, you need to invent a new product. I remember mine being for that. I thought it was genius and I still do to this day. And then the product actually came out a few years later and totally flopped. Maybe it was a marketing thing, but uh, <laughs> I uh, brought, I, I made a self dispensing toothbrush. So you basically like pushed a little, basically like a can't, it's basically like a soft, like a tube of basically like toothpaste, like inside a toothbrush. And it came up out through the bristle, like through a holes near the bristles. And I was like, oh, you can just buy the little cartridges, load them in there. You just push in the little thing. You got toothpaste. Uh -huh. 
And that was my invention. And then it actually got released and then it flopped. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't have anything to do with the release. I think it was one of those like parallel thinking things. Yeah. But um, yeah, I remember as a kid, I was like, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> See, mom, I told you I know stuff. Oh, it's like I know the markets. It was mine. <laughs> this 13 year old, it's like the Tom Hanks movie where he's a kid. It's like, how do you know this will work with kids? Because I'm a kid at heart. <laughs> I'm just 30 now. <laughs> yeah. I remember we had to do short stories in like my fifth grade English class. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was that one Disney movie, Sinbad, where he like yeah. gets in the boat and like goes on this huge adventure. And I remember I, like, I made like a verbatim story of it and I read it in front of the class one day. And then just one girl in my class just goes, that's Sinbad. And I was like, oh, no, it's not. It's my own story. <laughs> You're like, shut up. I just changed the character name. So I was just like, yeah, he started off in this like tavern and then he got in a boat and then they found the edge of the world and they fell off. And then she was just like, no, that's Sinbad. I was like, like, so this character, Ben Sad. A bit sad. <laughs> ben Sad got on this boat and went to the edge of the, the desert in his boat. <laughs> Totally different story. <laughs> the adventures have been sad. The character arcs, totally different. Come on. <laughs> that was when Maple Story was coming out because I remember that uh, another dude told me I should have written about Maple Story instead. <laughs> We're fighting snails oh, in the man. forest in level one. You gotta love the uh, inventive ways uh, kids and we all found to, to plagiarize growing up. <laughs> pretty pretty genius stuff i feel like plagiarism could be really effective for actually learning how to do something because well i don't know like music especially like if you learn how to like replicate a tune from scratch you'll at least understand the theory about like how that song progressed and why it works so well when you're forced to like put those notes on the screen to be like oh i see how this note is just like one octave up which is why it sounds really good. Maybe if mm -hmm. I did that, my songs would sound as well as Kanye's. Yeah, it's like, um, it's not something that's popular here, but I, I have a minor. For all of those people who care what my minor is in, it is in um, Global Asian Studies specifically. Ooh. Yeah, let's talk about patents real quick and why China is so ahead of us. Yeah, specifically <laughs> Southern song um, paintings from the Song Dynasty is kind of my jam. But um one of the things in China and that is not so popular here often with like, like you mentioned, kind of like copyright and patent laws, but uh, growing up or like uh, painters, aspiring painters would take the great works of the great masters and overlay basically tracing paper and paint over them exactly. And so some of the original works that are long gone or burned or whatever only live on through the students tracings and they're still just as valued as the original. And that's something we don't really have here in the West so much, where copying is valued as a way to better your own art. Um, it's, it's getting there, I guess, somewhat. I mean, you can download like Drake's beat kit and make a Drake beat or something, right? Or, you know, whatnot. You can more easily copy. But in more Eastern cultures, that's actually kind of a much more uh, popular thing in terms of a training tool is like and and I know for web design for me personally one of the original assignments we we had that was like a good challenge was pick a website you like and make it again make it yourself but make it look exactly like it does now but just make it from scratch and that's like a really good exercise like you say you see the notes on the screen you basically you know you're mm -hmm. you're at code level rebuilding something to understand how code works yeah and sure you're copying but it's that's not the point the point isn't the copy you end up with yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's a really interesting point. I, I definitely, with my weird little Asian history background, I just immediately triggered this, that idea of like copying an Asian culture and how it's actually valued yeah. instead of seen as like plagiarism. Right, right, right. There's a, there's a pretty awesome dude named uh, Andrew Huang. Mm -hmm. And um, he, he has this, um, blog called like bunny bunny studios.com and it's like b-u-n-n-i-e and mm -hmm. he's kind of like known in the hacker space as just like this he's just really smart he's um um he's from uh yeah he's from uh kalamazoo michigan mm -hmm. and he works a lot in incubators in like shenzhen uh china mm. 
Yeah. And he talks about how the patent system in America is I mean, a lot of people think like, oh, well, this is, you know, the patent system is so great, like nothing's stolen. But in reality, when ideas are stolen and then built better, the society as a whole advances more. Mm -hmm. The patent system in America is one of the most, le one of the least intellectually uh, positive things. Because in China, they have no patent system. And so when mm -hmm. these companies either steal, share, or take the ideas of other companies, it, it, you know, it, within those those you know capitalist market provinces they just their level of creating and advancing and innovating is, is just exponentially quicker than america's because yeah it's like open source capitalism exactly right so like these these semiconductor factories are that print all of these circuits on a daily basis i mean they do it so cheap because everyone else can do it and the only people who are going to get ahead right or make it for cheaper or make processors on a smaller nanometer scale are going to be the ones that learn how to do it better or build a machine that prints and etches silicon dyes that much more efficiently, quickly, and at a smaller scale, which is why, you know, we don't print semiconductors here is because if somebody found out how to do that, it would no doubt be patented. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's an interesting thing. I, I used to always be like, oh, that's awesome. I can just get it protected and I'm safe. Yeah. Yeah. The more I got involved in coding over my life and the more, I don't know, you basically learn things like that. It's just like, no, I think this idea that it's private and it's mine and, you know, nobody else can have anything that's exactly this is really, I don't know. It, it seems to like go against the laws of nature in a sense, right? Like we should yeah. be communally working towards making things better. Right. And if you're kind of hoarding off to the side saying, I got the secret recipe, I don't know. To me, that yeah. that m weirdly crosses more into immorality than copying in a weird yeah. way. But not to go too deep into morality, but yeah. <laughs> check <laughs> this out real quick. I mean, this is just going to sidetrack this whole thing. Zoom, we're using Zoom for this lovely meeting. And this is not an endorsement because it's expensive for video. It's all right. Okay, it's all right, Zoom. If you want to sponsor this podcast, call me. <laughs> but I can put these backgrounds in, and look how terrible it is at discerning <laughs> the background from my face. Your eyes and your mouth are just hollow. That's just absolutely terrifying. Oh, yeah, Their so, machine learning must be not that good. Yeah, if you're listening to this, go find this video because this is, this is trippy. Maybe I'll make some rap video. This is pretty much a rap video these days. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so I don't know if we have much more. I'm on the lovely free version of Zoom, so I don't know if we can record over 30 minutes. But um, let me quickly unbox this fancy beast I got in front of me, and we'll wrap this up. I'll let you get back to your day. So this somehow turned into a uh, talk about careers to a talk about open source, uh, basically countries or products. And now we're going to go into like a product goddamn review. I mean, sorry, I said, God damn, no money for me, YouTube, <laughs> thanks. Um, Got to mark this as explicit now. So this is the Bayer Dynamic A20, Mr. Havats. And the reason I got this is because I have Bayer Dynamic DT990 Pros. Well, you can see right there in the small print that says 250 ohms i don't think it's going to focus and it's backwards so whatever but you'll see on the back of this these aren't one of the recommended headsets but that's not really saying you can only use it for these but it recommends this amp for 250 ohm level headphones so that's why i got it these things are hard to drive and you need a fucking tank of an amp to do so so here we are, staring at a German engineered box. Oh! You ready for this big reveal? I'm thoroughly excited. Because I just <laughs> yeah, looked at the is... price online and. Oh, here, let me do some. I'm terrified. How's that? Oh, that's very nice. That's very that's nice. That's an ASMR for you? That's a, dude, that's some perfect ASMR for me, man. <laughs> Okay. That that's uh 2080 proof mixed foam from China. Yeah. You can order it in varying grades. 
And boom, we got our unit. About the size of a MacBook. Or not a MacBook, a yeah. Mac Mini. <laughs> Mac Mini. Yes, a MacBook would be insanely big. Yeah. And we got a nice nice long power cable and a European one too for those losers. <laughs> for those who use the metric system. Yeah, for those. For those idiots on base ten. <laughs> <laughs> I love, there's a great like Tumblr post I saw that was just like, hey, in case you ever need to remember how many feet are in a mile, just remember five tomatoes, five, two, eight, oh. And then someone was just like, yeah, for kilometers, we just multiply by 10 because we use like, you know, a system that makes sense. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, can we just stop using Imperial, please? Because even our military uses metric. Yeah, it's, um, I, I don't really get the argument for staying. I get that some people will be like upset for a little bit, but like, We'd get over it super fast. Yeah. <laughs> By the it's, time you teach your kids to learn it, you've learned it. Yeah. 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 No, no. I, like, that's the thing that sucks is because when I was first learning, um, like, some basic engineering uh, yeah. for the ASVAB, they were talking about how electron flow, or sorry, yeah, uh, like the flow of electricity is the way that the positive, positively charged uh, electrons are flowing, mm -hmm. even though in reality, it's the position in which the negatively charged electrons are flowing, mm -hmm. right? But we still call it electron flow for positive, even though it's actually the other way around. And mm. that was decided in like the 1910s. Uh, no, no, oh, like wow. probably earlier than that. But we just haven't switched because it would literally change so much about like our graphs and our uh, like circuit board printouts and things like that and how we do all that kind of stuff. Even though yeah. when we refer to flow, we're talking about the opposite. And if you want to refer to the way that electricity is actually flowing, you use the term electron flow, which is where the negative charges are going. Hmm. And it's just really confusing and annoying. And <laughs> yeah. just one of those things where it's like, it's going to persist for all of human history, even though it's the other way around. Wow. That's crazy. I never knew that. Yeah. When you hear people say electron flow, it's where the negative is flowing, but positive charges do not actually flow. They're just how we show it on a graph, despite the fact that that's in physics, the opposite of what's happening. What in the hell is wrong with us? Benjamin Franklin. Yeah. Why do we like make decisions that make our life harder <laughs> for like all of history? It's like, let's make a huge global decision. Yeah. If you just Google electron flow, the first thing that shows up on Google is electron flow is what actually happens. And electrons flow out of the negative terminal through the circuit and into the positive terminal of the source. Both conventional current and electron flow are used. So conventional current is how you draw it on a map, which is the plus going into the minus, even though it's the minus going into the plus. Yeah. Thanks, Benjamin. Jeez. Benji. Benji. <laughs> Benji, come on now. Good old Benji. Oh, God. All right. Well, um, I think that's a good stopping point because I'm new to this whole thing and I don't know when to stop things. And that was probably <laughs> a terrible stopping point. But um, just trying to get a quick episode up. Thanks again to my guest, Mr. Tanner. If I called him Havati in the middle of there, I apologize. Don't worry about it, kids. Um, but that's, he goes by many names. He's like an amoeba. <laughs> <laughs> he just drifts in and drifts out. I'm multicellular and uh, I'm fast. Sometimes we call him Hugh Neutron even. So very multifaceted. It's Jimbo. Huge. Jimbo. Jimbo. Hey, Jimmy. Um, thanks, man. Jimbo. Enjoy being on the uh, – enjoyed getting to talk about, uh, you know, random potpourri. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. I Yeah, just – Everybody should, like and sub to Hack of All in. Trades right now. Do it, Hack of All Trades sub. All right, that's it, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. I will see you all later.